Hey friends, I'm uh, sorry I can't be with you today, but hopefully we're going to learn a little bit about graphing motion. So your assignments for today, you're already on the first part of this video. Then we're going to do some concept builders from the physics classroom to help us check what we know and get on the right track when, we're, when we might um, have some misunderstandings or some misconceptions about what's going on. And then finally, uh, you, you have an exit ticket today, an individual ranking task on Canvas. So we're going to talk a little bit about graphing position versus time and also velocity versus time today. Um, so with your graphs, usually um, in physics, time for graphing motion, time is going to be on the horizontal axis. It's kind of weird. You might think, oh, that's the X axis. Why don't we put X there? But time is on that horizontal axis. So I'll do my best to call these horizontal and vertical. Um, your vertical axis for a position versus time graph has position on it. That means when we look at these graphs and we look at that change in our position, we're actually looking at displacement over time. So that means if we look at these graphs with position on our vertical axis and time on our horizontal, so rise is position, run is time, and we find the slope at any point on that graph or each interval of that graph, then rise over run, change in position over change in time, that's actually our velocity. So if we wanted to find velocity, but let's say we didn't have a constant slope, let's say our graph is a little bit curved like this. Um, this looks like kind of a parabola. What we could do instead is we would look at the, um, we would look at, if we're looking at this point right here, around like 2.5 seconds, then we would draw this um, on this red curve, sorry, we would draw this blue line, this line that's tangent to the curve, so it intersects the curve only at that point, and we would just find the slope of that line. So it looks like, this looks like it's about 80 meters, and this goes up to about quite 250, maybe like 240 meters. And then we would have this little blue line that's at one second on the horizontal axis and five seconds. So if we are finding our slope or our velocity, we're looking at rise over run. So change in, change in our vertical axis, change in X in this case, 240, our final minus initial, minus 80, that many meters, and we would divide by our change in horizontal variable time, five minus one seconds. So we've got what, 160 meters divided by four seconds gives us 40 meters per second. So that would be our velocity at that point that we found from a line that's tangent to the curve. Um, we could also look at points to the left of that and see that, well, they've got lower slopes, they would have lower velocities, and points to the right of that would have higher slopes or higher velocities. Um, so I, I also want to say, like, when we get to, um, when we have constant velocity, let's go back to that first, uh, when we have something that's moving at a constant speed, a constant velocity, then our position time graph is going to be a, a straight line, either if it's got no velocity, it'll have no slope, or if it has some velocity, a positive velocity, it has a positive slope, like in this case, or if this were going downward diagonally, then it would have a negative slope and a negative velocity. But the slope of that line shows us our velocity, and then if we have something that is accelerating with constant acceleration, which will be everything we do in this class that's accelerating, then we will have a graph that looks like a parabola. Uh, it'll be either part of a parabola like this one is, or some, some portion of a parabola, maybe even a whole parabola. Um, so acceleration is going to be a curve and it's going to be specifically parabolic with, our, with all of um, our examples. So if we look at these graphs, these are all parabolic. So we've got some acceleration, but we want to know a little bit about, about the velocity and about the acceleration. So for this first graph, 
we have a positive change in position. We're moving forward more in the positive direction. That means we have a positive velocity. And it looks like for this one, this object is going to be, so it starts off with a low slope and then the slope gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So this one's going to be speeding up. That actually means, in this case, it has positive acceleration. My, my velocity starts off less positive, and then it gets steeper and steeper and steeper and more of a positive slope. So if the slope is becoming more positive, we have a positive acceleration too. Now the second graph, we are going backwards. That means we have a negative velocity. But if you look at the slope, it's steep in the negative direction at first, and then it levels off. It ends up getting flatter and flatter by the end. It looks like it might even level out to zero. So that means it's slowing down because it's approaching a speed of zero. But if you look at your change in velocity, going from a more negative slope to a zero slope is actually a positive change. So the acceleration here is positive. Now in the final graph, we also have a negative velocity, but there it starts off at zero, zero slope, zero velocity, and then it gets more and more and more negative. So we're speeding up going backwards in that case. So it's getting faster, but, but it's going in the reverse direction. This would be like a car going in reverse, and then you hit the gas pedal, the accelerator that's going to accelerate you negatively. So in this case, our slope goes from zero to more and more and more negative. It also has negative acceleration. So if you look at these, the cases where we're speeding up, velocity and acceleration have the same sign. Either they're both positive or they're both negative. Um, for the case where we're slowing down, velocity and acceleration would have opposite signs. Your velocity is in one direction, but your change in velocity is in the other in order to slow down. Um, so something else we wanna look at in addition to all of these changes in slope from position versus time graphs are velocity versus time graphs. So you might have some situation where you some situations where we graph velocity on that vertical axis. You have to think about that completely differently. So in our first graph, we have this parabola. We have an object that is increasing its speed. It's speeding up in the positive direction. But to show on a velocity versus time graph that something's speeding up, it's just going to be going in the positive direction with a constant slope. With this one, think about the slope of a velocity versus time graph. You would have change in V on the rise, the vertical axis, over change in time on the horizontal axis. That is acceleration. That was our definition of acceleration, changing the rate of change of velocity, change in V over change in T. So this has a constant slope for a velocity time graph. That means it has a constant, ah, constant acceleration. Okay, so one more thing with these velocity time graphs, because we can not only find the, the acceleration using the slope, we can actually find the displacement here. So we've already looked at this formula where, well, we usually use X final, X initial, blah, 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 but, you know, uh, same thing. We've already looked at this formula where we have um, our displacement can be found uh, using our initial velocity, time, and then if we have acceleration or not. So in this first situation, we have a constant velocity of 30 meters per second. And that happens for a time of four seconds. Now in that one, we don't have any slope for this line. So if our slope is zero, our acceleration is zero. So if we don't have acceleration, we can find the displacement here just by multiplying our initial velocity, 30 meters per second, our velocity the whole time, times this four seconds, 
and we get 120 meters. Now, I could also have a situation where let's say our times are a little off. We don't start this thing until like three seconds. So this starts at three, ends at six. My time here is three seconds. My velocity is 30 meters per second. We still don't have acceleration because my slope isn't going up or we don't have any slope here. Uh, our line isn't going up and down. We're not changing velocity. So here, our change in position is 90 meters. Now we do have a third case. This one, we've got acceleration. So we could go back and like plug all this mess into this formula, find the acceleration, blah, blah, blah. Um, but we could also just look at the area under this line. Um, so for this one, if we were looking at a triangle, the area of a triangle is one half base times height. You might have noticed we've been finding area. Um, so if we look at one half base times height here, hmm, that half is also in the kinematic formula. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could figure out that that's actually like, it works out, it's the same thing. That's kind of where that comes from. But, um, but what we can do here is say, let's say we have one half times four seconds, times 40 meters per second, and we end up getting a displacement of 80 meters in this situation. So if you have velocity time, find displacement just by looking at the area bound by that axis. Um, now, a quick note, if you do have uh, so a negative velocity, if it goes below the x-axis, then you're actually subtracting from that positive displacement that you might have had. Think about it, if something moves forward and then it moves backward, um, then you, you're you getting rid of, some, your displacement is going to be the positive plus the negative part. So you would actually subtract that area under the um, negative under the x-axis that's in the negative portion your velocity when you're finding that area would be negative okay so quick note uh, if we're applying this to this graph um, velocity versus time it does get kind of confusing here because this flat line where on the position time graphs we would have said we were stopped not changing position here we're at a constant negative velocity of it looks like negative 12 meters per second then this interval here this first part we are actually slowing down but it means it's positive acceleration so we're going in the negative direction so we've got negative velocity but the negative velocity is getting less and less and less and approaching zero at this instant where it crosses the horizontal axis this object is stopped for a split second and then it moves forward and it's still accelerating accelerating um, at the very top it's actually got a constant velocity of 18 meters per second um, and then it is slowing down with a negative acceleration that we could find from the slope until it hits this final point where it is stopped again. Okay, so let's really quickly see if we understood this. Which ones have constant velocity? So pause the video, go ahead, pause it, and ask yourself. Okay, so hopefully you paused it. So A does have constant velocity for position time graph it's got a constant slope so it's got a constant velocity um, for b it has zero velocity but it is constant zero is a constant value and then your other correct answer is d we have velocity on the vertical axis and that graph is staying the same so it is constant. Um, for C, nope, we got changing velocity. So I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about graphing position, velocity, and time. 
and I will see you soon.